yourselves and your group? I'm uh, Mike Shipston. I'm Professor of Physiology and Director of the Centre for Integrative Physiology um, at the University of Edinburgh. Um, the Centre for Integrative Physiology itself is a, a large group of more than 180 investigators uh, working across areas of membrane biology, uh, neural control systems and developmental biology. Uh, my own laboratory uh, is largely interested in ion channel physiology um, and in particular we look at post-transcriptional and post-translational mechanisms of ion channel regulation. So that goes from the regulation of alternative splicing to regulation of single ion channel proteins right through to the behaviour of ion channels um, in intact organisms uh, models such as uh, transgenic mice for example. So uh, our own work spans the whole uh, remit of molecular biology, protein biochemistry, uh, high resolution cell imaging, uh, electrophysiology, right up to behavioural studies um, in animals. I'm Heather McCafferty, I'm a research assistant working for Mike Shipston in the Centre for Integrative Physiology. Um, my role in the lab is to provide the molecular biology support for everyone and support for the two postdocs on my project. Can you tell us what challenges you faced before ECAT? So the major challenges really was the wide diversity um, of both uh, informa types of information that we, we generate. Um, as I said, that we really have data from uh, molecular analysis, for example, quantitative RT-PCR, gene cloning, uh, right through to electrophysiological analysis and uh, a large volume data sets with high resolution imaging, for example, from confocal images and total internal reflection microscopy. Uh, right up to behavioural assays um, uh, in animals. So it's really about coordinating uh, those types of data sets that actually fit together uh, and keeping them contained within projects because those information are largely derived from different people uh, within the lab. And also we have a very extensive uh, collaborative network both in the, in the UK uh, and across Europe and, and the US. So it's really trying to keep that, that information together. And I guess one of the big challenges that we, we really have is the number of people who come in, in and out of the lab. For example, we have a lot of uh, students who maybe only come in for six months. And it's really about keeping track um, of that data and integrating it in with um, existing projects. Yeah, I have two, two main challenges in the lab. Um, one is to coordinate the storage of information. Um, we have a large library of about 500 different DNA clones which have to be catalogued and stored, so we need to provide them um, location, um, cloning information for each individual one in a way that people can access. And the other challenge we have is um, coordinating different data types um, for experiments. We have a, a paper lab journal and we have to coordinate that with different kinds of result file types. So we have Excel spreadsheets, TIFF image files, um, so trying to get everything together in a, a usable way was a major challenge. And, and what results have you seen with ECAT? So the, the major thing actually, and, and I guess it was one of the things that was initially a surprise for us, was that actually transferring to an electronic lab notebook format actually is very easy. Um, and the great thing about that is because uh, ECAT is, is web-based, so you can access from any, anywhere. Um, so it's, it's really been a, about being able to coordinate um, those activities together um, and also being able to use it as a, as a cataloging and um, archiving retrieval system in, in a way that we can keep um, uh, both catalogues of resources as well as things like protocols um, up to date and exchange that very efficiently between lab members. That's it, having, having everything tied together in, in one source resource, um, so results, protocols, um, constructs, where things are physically, having everything together under one system has just been perfect. Um, and can you tell us, um, uh, so give us some details on how, how you're using ECAT? So uh, I guess it's, it's largely in, in two ways. One is, is with uh, using it as an electronic uh, notebook. So the great thing about ECAD is that it's incredibly flexible in terms of how you can set it up. And so, for example, um, each member in the lab has um, their own folders and they put their own experiments uh, within that. 
but of course it's very easy to integrate uh, that information together. So a good example, for example, is, is Heather, who's working on multiple projects simultaneously with several other people in, in the laboratory. And so it's very easy for us to keep that information together for the different projects coming from multiple people. So it's that type of, of thing that, that, that's very useful. The other thing actually that, that's, that's been fantastic, and again this is because it's a web-based um, system, is that you can access information and import or retrieve information from anywhere. So for example, just last week I was in Germany doing experiments, I needed uh, some information that was sat on ECAP, I just went to web browser, um, found that information, and at the same time could upload the data that I generated out there. So where you are doesn't matter anymore. Um, you can access and input data from, from anywhere um, in a very controlled uh, controlled way. But something that you can set up uh, it, the way that works for your lab. I, I use ECAT in two main ways. One is a cataloging system to keep track of the numerous things going on. And secondly, as an electronic lab book where I can record everything from protocols, experimental data to all my results all, all together in one place.